Welcome to the Kanoi Church Podcast. We're glad that you're interested in connecting through this teaching time. If you'd like to connect further, feel free to reach out to us through our website, kanoichurch.org. For now, enjoy this teaching from Kanoi Church, where our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning. All right, I had, I had some helpers this morning who were supposed to give a rock to every single person. Does everybody have a rock? If you don't have a rock, I have more. I brought like 125 because I thought the seats might be filled today. Uh, oh, figures, you too. Anybody else? Okay, so you're saying, why, why, why do we have rocks? And Randy pointed out something to me that um, I, I didn't think about before. Do you need a rock? There you go. Um, he said, why would you stand in front of people and then give them rocks? And I didn't think about it that way. So I, I, you have to promise not, no matter how the message goes, you can't throw them at me, okay? All right, so, yeah. So the first thing that I want you to do with the rock is just hold it. Don't let go of it. You don't have to hold it up. Just put it in your hand, keep it in your hand. If you want to put it in both hands, that's okay. But try to keep it, try holding it until we come to the next next part. I'm going to do the same thing, so it might be more difficult for me than it is for you, but... um, you're thinking, why, why rocks? Why, why is there a rock? Well, I'll get to that. But today we start a new series. Um, it's uh, about a book written by Andy Stanley. It's called The Enemies of the Heart. Um, we're going to focus on, there's four emotions that he talks about that um, we struggle with, that we deal with, that we have to think about. And those are, we're going to do one a week. So the first one is, is uh, there's guilt, anger, greed, and jealousy. So today, oh, see, you're throwing your rock already. Today, we're going to talk about guilt. All right, now I know some of you just said, oh, guilt, I'm not listening. I don't want to have anything to do with guilt. He, I'm, I, I have enough guilt. I don't need anybody telling me what I'm guilty of and what I'm doing. Well, that's not what we're going to do today. Um, guilt, okay, so the, um, we... Uh, we're going to talk about your heart today. In the enemy of the heart, we're going to talk about your heart and the guilt that's in your heart, but not your physical heart. So we're not going to talk anything. I'm not going to get technical, physical thing. We're going to talk about your other heart. Now you say, wait a minute. I don't have two hearts. I have one heart. Well, you really have two hearts. You have the heart that beats, that pumps your blood. And then you have the heart that philosophers and poets and and People that fall in love, they, that, that heart. So that's the heart we're gonna talk about today. Um, you know, the, 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 the heart that, you know, makes your, you, you swell with pride when your child does something good. Uh, I'm talking about the one that enables you to love, to fear, and to experience life. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about guilt and we may have, we may come across some things that, that you don't want to want to listen to. If you need to take a 10 minute not listening to me break and then come back, that's okay. Not 10 minutes, 10 seconds. 10 minutes would be too much. I'd lose, I'd lose all of you. So, um, guilt is something that makes us feel sad. It makes us feel bad. It makes us seem anxious and sometimes downright just mad. Guilt is um, something that we don't set out in the morning to do. We don't say, okay, I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna sin just so I can feel guilty. I don't think anybody does that. But since we're all humans, we know we're gonna sin. We know that we're gonna do it. No matter what we try to do, sin is going to happen in our lives. Um, Now, in 1 John 1, 9, God tells us, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us 
from all unrighteousness. So does that mean if we just confess to God and, and then our sin is gone, our guilt is gone? Well, it's not quite that simple. It's a little more complicated than that. Um, one of the reasons I think that so many of, of, of us, God's children, are, are living defeated lives is because of guilt. Guilt, of, guilt is one of Satan's biggest weapons that he uses against us. I also did not take my medicine today, so we'll see how this goes. Yay! Um, we, we, we have this way of thinking that guilt... You know, if I, if I am guilty of something, then I need to confess my sin, confess my guilt, and I, I'm okay. But that's not where it ends. Satan then says, yeah, but are you really okay? Are you really okay with that? Yeah, I know he said he forgives you, but does he really forgive you? Now, let's think about all the things that goes on with guilt. And, and you start listening to Satan. And the, the more... <laughs> The more that you listen to Satan, the more that it comes back to you and the more you think about it. And then you get in this big loop where, you know, you say, no, but I'm forgiven. But Satan says, yeah, but no, you're not. And then you say, yeah, but I'm forgiven. And Satan says, no, you're not. So um, if you want to live a life of spiritual victory, we have to learn to let go of our guilt. So... Everybody who has their rock in their right hand, put it in their left hand. And everybody who has it in their left hand, put it in their right hand. Okay? Okay. Um, the problem with guilt, though, is that when we feel guilty, we hide. You know, if we're, if we're guilty of breaking a law and the police are looking for us, some people hide from the police. If we break a rule at home and our parents are looking for us, we hide from our parents. I, one time I was in trouble and we had this thing, this place under our, our basement steps where we put all our winter coats. And I knew I was in trouble and I didn't want to get in trouble. So I f climbed back in there, hid under all the, the coats, and I fell asleep. <clears throat> I must have been there two or three hours and my mom's looking for me all over the place. And then I finally woke up, and then I got in more trouble. So running from that guilt just got me in more trouble. Um, m many of us today, we're hiding from not the police, not our parents, but we're hiding from God. Hiding from, hiding from God is not something that we can do. God is everywhere. God knows everything. You can try and hide from God, but God knows where you are, and he will find you. Um, so if God is everywhere, and he knows everything about us, what could motivate us from wanting to hide from him? Well, there are, there are, probably, a lot of an there are probably a lot of answers to that question, and... Since it's love feast, I'm not going to go into all those answers because you all want to get down to, to lunch and you have rocks. So um, we'll make it short. Um, but we know we've done something wrong. That's why we want to hide from God. It's, it's a natural human characteristic to want to hide. Um, but what we have to realize is that there's two kinds of guilt. Um, there is the godly sorrow that leads us, a person to repentance, um, and that's known as conviction, and conviction comes from the Holy Spirit, and that's not a bad thing. We, we, if we do something that we know that we've done wrong, the Holy Spirit convicts us, and we look for repentance, and we need to make, make that better. Um, in, in, in John 16, 8, it says, when he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and, and righteousness and judgment. Once a person repents, 
the guilt lifts and they feel relieved and the joy that they have because their sin is forgiven. They, they, feel, they feel joy. There's another kind of guilt and, and that's condemnation. It's accusation. It's, um, it, it's not from God. That, that comes from Satan. Uh, Satan loves, loves to get to, to, to torment us, to get us to a point where that condemnation just keeps eating and eating and eating at us. Um, and, and there is no good that comes from condemnation. Um, it, is, it is terrible. Um, we know that um, it tears us down, it makes us feel dirty, it makes us feel unworthy, um, and it rids us of our faith, our confidence in God and it's a lie that the father of lies tells us. I've, I've seen how guilt can open the door for people to be tormented by, by Satan. You feel guilty about something and you start thinking that way and you go down a path and it's not a good path to go down. And sometimes it's, it's really hard to get out of that path. Uh, Jesus tells us in, in Matthew um, 18 that it's important for us to forgive those who did wrong to us, but it's also important for us to forgive ourselves. If we don't forgive ourselves, then we can keep in that cycle. You know, I know Joe, he he forgave me, but I still can't get over what I did to him. Or Sally, you know, she she said everything that, that, you know, it was right, I, it wasn't my fault, whatever, but, I can't give, forgive myself for what I did to Sally. So forgiveness is, 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 is it's two parts. The person that's wronged needs to be forgiven, but you also need to forgive yourself. Um, in, in Colossians 3.13, he says, um, it, it, it says to forgive one another. It doesn't say just forgive the other person that did you wrong. It says forgive one another, and I read that as I forgive them and I forgive myself. They forgive me and they forgive themselves. To me, that's one another. Now, if Mr. Webster was here, he might have a a different philosophy than mine. But I think that that's what we need to do. We need to to learn to forgive each other and forgive ourselves. The phrase one another in, in the Greek, and I hope I get this right, is... He too. Did I get that right, Nick? All right, I'm getting the thumbs up, so I got that right. Um, We we, we look at forgiveness, we have bitterness, regardless of what's been done. If we can't forgive, there's gonna be bitterness there. Um, And bitterness can defile us. Uh, it, It says that in Hebrews. And spiritual defilement leads to a person being open to Satan. Um, we, we, and, and we don't want that. Guilt is cultivated, made, cultivated when you continually allow yourself to dwell and think about something, um, about how badly you messed up, um, how, how, much, you know, how much you've done somebody wrong, what sins you've committed, and the enemy loves to remind us about that. We can't allow ourselves to fall into that trap. That is a terrible trap to fall into. We have to realize that God loves us more than Satan wants to manipulate us. God loves us more than Satan loves us. God, lo- God wants us to be with him more than Satan wants us to be with him. So if that's the truth, if that's, that's the case, we want to be with God more than we want to be with Satan, right? That's, that's, so when you, when you let guilt take you over, when you let Satan win, you're telling God, no, yeah, I, I'd rather be with Satan. You don't do it like that's what I want, but your actions say that. And no matter how many times you do that to yourself and allow Satan to get that in you, God will come back and tell you, 
a thousand fold more that he still loves you and that nothing that you can do will ever make him stop loving you. So we need to keep away from the strongholds. If, if Satan gets a stronghold into our heart, into our life, then we need to work extra hard to get rid of that. So work extra hard to forgive us, ourselves. When, when, we, when we repent of our sins, but we continually feel guilty day after day after day, that's building that stronghold. That's building that, um, that, that stronghold. Um, and a stronghold, for those, I mean, I'm sure you all know what a stronghold is, but for, for those of us that didn't know that, uh, a stronghold is just a lie. In this case, it's just a lie that Satan's telling us that, you know, we, we'd be better off with him. People who have strongholds, strongholds of guilt, rarely see God for who he is. They see God as a God that doesn't care, a God that will, you know, is not there for me when I need him to be there, but you know, when, when, when I needed somebody, Satan was right there because he agreed with me, he said everything, you know, he helped me feel these things, and, and we need to make sure that that's not what we're doing. Um, we are, in God, a new creation. We are not, in Satan, a new creation. The Bible never says that. It says, in God, we are a new creation. So, the strongholds, we need to tear them down. Um, Andy Stanley says, you know, we've, we've changed the word guilt from a noun to a verb. Okay, let that sink in for a second. So, have you ever been guilted into doing something? Or more importantly, have you ever guilted somebody else into doing something? See, now it's a verb. We don't like it as a verb. We like guilt as a noun. So, um, unfortunately, our world is driven by rules and regulations and control and a please me attitude. Whatever I wanna do, I get to do. And guilt is really not important. Guilt is not something that I need to worry about. As long as I get what I want, then guilt is secondary. Let's think about, okay, put your stone in your other hand. Um, let's think about children for a minute. When children are born, they don't come into the world with guilt. They don't come into the world with uh, condemnation. They come into the world as innocent babies that are just here to soak up everything and learn about things. It's, it's sort of like your pets. You get a pet from the puppy store and they're kind of innocent in, to begin with until they learn bad habits. And then we teach, we teach these things. Um, through our actions, we teach our children. We may not, we may not set out to t teach our children, okay, this is what you should do. This is what, you, I mean, we. We do set out to say this is what we should do, but we do other things. So our children see us do things. Our pets are the same way, they see us do stuff. Um, but we start conditioning people and pets and things. At, you know, as babies grow up, they're conditioned to see what we do and how we do it. And so it, we don't want them to think that it's wrong or inappropriate, so we tell them, oh, this is what you should do, and then you do something else. Well. After a while, you start feeling guilty about how you raised your kids because your kids didn't turn out the way you wanted them to turn out. You're like, wow, where'd you learn that? Must have been from your other parent because I know it wasn't from me. <laughs> um, so, so they had to learn it somewhere and they don't learn all their things from their, their friends. So we as humans, as people, we learn, we, we teach things without even knowing that we're teaching things. Um, some things we learn from environment, some things we learn from this is how I did it as a kid, this is how you know, my parents showed me. We, that can lead to more guilt in us because if, if our children sin and we know they're going to sin, then we feel guilty because we haven't given them what we thought that they should have. 
So how do we get rid of guilt? How, how, how is guilt um, taken away? Well, the first thing that we need to do is we need to lean on the love of God more than anything else. If we lean on God, God can help us in a way that makes it easier for us. Um, God, God's love can take away guilt because we remember we talked about the two different ty- types of, uh, of guilt. The, the, the one where we have the Holy Spirit and they can, he can, the Holy Spirit convicts us and then the other one. So by having the Holy Spirit convict us of our guilt, we can then move to, to the next step and the next step and the next step and hopefully by then our guilt is gone. Um, as we learn to embrace God though, um, we also have to learn to embrace ourselves. Um, I, I, I said before that we have to learn to forgive ourselves. We also have to learn to love ourselves. Sometimes we don't do a very good job of that. We might do a good job loving our neighbor and loving our friends and, and not loving ourselves. If, if we don't love ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to have a loving relationship with God. Through, through our, God, through our uh, loving relationship with God, though, we, we learn these, the, the ways to, to get rid of guilt. We learn the ways to handle guilt. We learn the ways to um, come to agree with God that we are not just, we are not as bad as the last bad thing we did. That doesn't define who we are. Guilt will do that to people. Guilt will say, well, you know, I'm just uh, fill in the blank with whatever your guilt is. Or the only thing I know how to do is this because of guilt. And that, that's not how God looks at us. God does not look at us like the last bad, bad thing that we did. Um, all, of, all of your life, you're going to have th- people in your life and you're going to have situations where you're going to need healing. Healing from something they did to you or something you did to them. And if you lean on the love of God, that healing goes so much easier. So in cultivating the love of God, we have to... God loves us unconditionally. We have to love ourselves unconditionally too. We can't love ourselves only if we do certain things. Unconditional love is unconditional love, whether it's for your neighbor, whether it's for your, your children, your spouse, or yourself. That unconditional love is so important because when we start to put conditions on loving somebody, that just, that's, just ask, that's a recipe for, for not being able to love that person. You may think you can, oh, I love this person as long as they do this for me or as long as they do that for me. And that's not where we want to be. We want to be, I love this person no matter what. I love myself no matter what I do. I can be, you know, upset with something I've done, but you, you, you have to move on. You have to, you have to love yourself. Um, sometimes we get disappointed in things that we've done. And we think, oh... You know, I'm so disappointed. Why did I do that? Well, we don't know why we did what we did. We don't know why we always do what we do. We just do it. We just know that we do things. And, and as human beings, we're going to do things that have, we, we can't explain. We just need to know that even if we do that, we still have to love ourselves. And you need, we need to learn to appreciate ourselves where we are. Not, as soon as I get to that point, I'll start loving myself. Or as soon as she forgives me for doing this, I'll start loving myself. We, we have to love ourselves right where we are. We, we tell our kids, oh, you know, Johnny, you just have to focus on the good things that Johnny does. I know sometimes he, he upsets you, but just focus on the good things and everything will be all right. We have to do that for ourselves too. We have to focus on our good things, on the things that we do for ourselves. Because guilt gets inside of us and it just wraps itself around our other heart, both hearts, and it, it just tears us apart. 
we have to quiet our minds sometimes and just say, you know what? I did something wrong. I feel a guilty. I know God loves me. I'm going to forgive myself. I'm going to give myself permission to forgive myself. Sometimes you have to ask yourself for forgiveness. It's okay to say, can I forgive myself? The answer should always be yes. You can forgive yourself. If you can always forgive your neighbor, if you can always forgive your spouse, if you can always forgive your children or your parents, then you can always forgive yourself. And if you need help, you need to ask for it. There, we, have, we have a whole congregation of people here that can help us. We can, we can talk to somebody. There may be somebody sitting right next to you that's going through the same thing you're going through, and they're having trouble forgiving themselves too, but you can talk to them. You can talk to people. Um, take the help when you can get the help. It, it, if you don't know who you can help, I'm sure God will put somebody in front of you that can help you. God will put somebody there that, that knows what you're going through, that can help you get to that point where, where you can, can help get to that point. Um, you're, you're, if you have children, don't try to control them. Show them what they need to do in love. I know a lot of parents that, you know, they, they tell their children to be good or, or they're going to be sorry. Um, my mother used to tell me, if you embarrass me in there, I'm going to embarrass you. Well, that's not the way to raise your children. And if that's the way you raise your children, I'm sorry, I don't mean to to pry, whatever works for you. But, but if we raise our children in love, if we show them love, we can correct them. We can tell them that they've done something wrong. We can show them that they've done something wrong and do it in love. But if we, if we show them love for, for, and forgiveness, then that's what they learn and they'll be able to do that for themselves. Um, when, when you have guilt, when, when, when you decide to forgive yourself, we don't need to, to think about shame or regret anymore. If God has forgiven us and he's forgotten about it, then we should be able to as well. Um, you, you have to allow yourself to receive that gift from God. Um, because if you don't allow yourself to receive that gift from God, then you're gonna get back to that, that cycle, that stronghold. Um, even if it's hard for you. And there are things that we do that cause guilt for us that are harder than other things. Like, you know, if I don't take the dogs out and they go to the bathroom on the floor, if I clean it up, everything's fine, right? Well, no, because the dog has been suffering. Otherwise, they wouldn't have gone to the bathroom in the house. So there are some things that it's easier to forgive than, than other things. So. But it doesn't really matter. You should be able to forgive yourself for anything, and shame and regret should be forgiven a, a, as well. Um, people often feel, feel guilty when they're in the middle of, of something. Um, you know, maybe a husband's not being the, the best leader of his family, and, you know, he's having trouble with his spouse. Um, maybe... Um, you, you, you're a, an employee and you did something at work that you shouldn't have done and now you have to answer to your boss. You know, these are all things that, you know, maybe you should feel guilty for, for doing those things. But sometimes when people feel guilty of, of doing something that's wrong, then they uh, suppress the feelings and, and then they get to a point where they're back into that cycle of, of Satan and Satan. Um, if, if we have um, a, a situation that, that we can't deal with, God can deal with it. We don't know why we did, did do everything that we do, but God knows why we do what we do. We don't have to have all the answers because God has all the answers. Um, when, when we feel guilty, we can't ignore it, I mean, because there are steps that we need to do. And the first step in, in dealing with 
with guilt is confession. It, it's, there's a, a, a list of things that we need to do, but confession is the first thing that we need to do. And I'm not saying that I need to go to my, my friend and confess. I need to confess it to God because that's, that's where we need to start to get our forgiveness. Um, so it, it's, it's, confession is the hardest part to that, I think, because by confessing, we have to admit that we've done something wrong and not many of us wanna admit that we've done anything wrong. So how do we deal with guilt? Okay, so I've got some steps for you. These are surefire, always gonna work steps that might not work. Um, but this is what you should try. Um, first, you need to understand the nature of God's forgiveness towards you. God will forgive you. You gotta understand that. You have to repent of your sin and sometimes we've already repented um, or we've asked for forgiveness, but we haven't repented. So we need to repent of our sins. Um, the third thing is we need to realize that our past sins have been forgiven. We don't have to keep saying, okay, um, I know that I did this wrong today, but remember those other three things that I confessed of the other day? Well, I, I, wanna, I wanna repent of those as well. Oh, of course, unless you're still doing them. We don't want, we don't want that to happen. Repent, repent means a, a change. So if you repent of something, you should be changing your, 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 your behaviors. Um, we're never told to just you know, lay around in our past sins, um, but we need to move forward. We need to um, press forward. We need to get past those sins that we've done. All right, time to change again. <clears throat> um, and the fourth step is to forgive yourself. Jesus made it abundantly clear that forgiving, uh, that forgiving ourselves was important. We need to release uh, ourselves from the bondage, from the, from the, from the sin, from the guilt, and, and move forward because you know, God forgave us, we need to forgive ourselves. Um, guilt tells us, I, I owe you something. If you feel guilty, then guilt needs to give you something, whether it makes you feel bad. Guilt also wants to own you too. You know, if, if, if you do something that, that you feel guilty about, Guilt is gonna get in your head and say, well, now I own you, I got you. I know, I know what your weakness is, I know how to get to you, and I know what to do to make you feel really bad. Um, the, uh, the, in the Old Testament, they used to offer sacrifices uh, to cover people's sins, but Jesus' blood on the cross did that for us. So we don't have to uh, purchase pigeons from the, the coffee bar out there or bring goats in or anything like that. We don't need to do that because Jesus' blood did that for us. So now we come to the part about the rocks. Why have I been holding this rock the entire time? Well, I'm gonna tell you that, Barry. I'm gonna tell you right now. This rock symbolizes your guilt. We've been holding it, we've been carrying it throughout the whole um, service, well, the last 20 minutes. And some of you are like, why am I holding this rock? It's heavy. I don't want it. Well, if you got a big rock. Some of you got a little rock, so um, I don't know about that. But I want you to imagine this rock is in your pocket now. And every time you move, it pokes you in the leg. That's sort of how guilt is, you know. Every time you sort of think about it, and I know these rocks are smooth and they probably wouldn't poke you, but I didn't want anybody to get hurt. But if they were a jagged rock, it would poke you in the leg and it would hurt. And that's, what, that's how guilt is. Every time you think about it, it hurts you just a little bit more. So, wouldn't it be great if I could tell you a way to get rid of this rock? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm, I'm gonna tell you. In a minute, I'm gonna ask the, the worship uh, team to come forward, and we're gonna take our rocks, 
and we're gonna lay them at the foot of the cross. Now, I know that a lot of times we take our baggage and we lay it at the foot of the cross, and then right before we leave church, we go get, pick it up, and we take it home with us. I'm not giving you the rocks back. These are Amy's rocks. I did not take them from the church. These are Amy's rocks from her garden, and I have to give them back to her. So all your guilt is going to come to my house and live in my rock bed. <laughs> See how that works? That, that's going to work out great, right? So it, it, wouldn't it be great if that's how burdens really work, if we could really l- just set it down there? Well, we, we sort of can. Um, the, the weight of, the, of guilt, though, is like the rock. It, it sits in your hand. It makes your hand tired. It sits in your pocket. It, it weighs you down. Um, but this guilt, getting rid of this guilt, we don't have to have all the answers because God does. And by symbolically, um, you, can, you guys can go. By symbolically putting the rock over there, um, we're, we're going to lay all our guilt over there. If... If you want to, um, if you're able to come forward uh, while the worship team plays, um, what I'd like you to do is just, as you're, as you're waiting to put your rock in the bucket, just think about a guilt that you have, something that, that you've done that you're feeling uh, convicted about, and just talk to God about it. Tell God, you know, God, I've had this, I've been carrying this for a long time or it happened in the parking lot today, I stole someone's parking spot, whatever. Whatever that guilt is, it's personal to you. I don't need to know what your guilt is. That's between you and God. Just talk to God about the guilt and then just, just lay it in the, in the bucket. Hi, this is Pastor Nick. Thanks for listening. I hope something that you heard today was very helpful. If you want to connect with us further, feel free to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or our website, kanoichurch.org. Sure, I'm glad we're in this together.